Hey folks, Alan Manick, the Hot Rod Hippie here. This week's video, we're gonna be talking about butt welding versus overlapping for your panel replacement. Let's check it out. So now in this video talking about overlapping versus butt welding, I am primarily concerned with panels on a vehicle that maybe necessarily weren't overlapped from the factory. So say a quarter panel, a fender, a door skin, a cab corner on a pickup truck. These things in their primary large areas of them are not overlapped. They are not normally layer over layer and spot welded or fully stitch welded along the edge, anything like that. They are one continuous piece. That's the primary focus of this video. So I think you could probably guess where I'm going with this already. Now I've seen plenty of videos on here. I've seen posts online, different people saying that there's nothing wrong with overlapping your sheet metal replacement panels, that butt welding in panels is an advanced skill. That's for the professionals. That takes a lot of work, a lot of time. That's, that's over my head. I'm just gonna go ahead and overlap my panels. You can do this in a lot of different ways. You can pick up a set of these pliers. I think Denfix makes these ones. They have a little step notch in them so you can actually use these to create a stepped flange all the way around a replacement panel or piece you've made to kind of lay it in flat against something, have it come up from behind a panel and the hole you've created so that it sits out flush to the base material. Let's get the honesty out of here. I did this, I have done this in my career. When I didn't know any better earlier on in the industry, for me anyway, I would overlap panels from time to time. And I'm not necessarily proud of that, but we all learn, we all grow. And I'm just here to teach you folks the right ways to help you grow and learn yourself. Now, another way you can do this is you can actually take a bead roller and create a step portion like I've done here. So you can create a wider flange than that tool could create. This one here, I created on the bead roller quick, dirty, just to show you a sample piece of what I'm talking about. It's a piece of 18 gauge steel, well, two pieces of 18 gauge steel stepped and set up so that I could go ahead and lay these next to each other, weld up the seam entirely or spot weld these two together and create a continuous panel. I could create a replacement panel in this fashion. If you can't tell from my tone already, however, I am telling you, don't overlap your panels. Do not do it. So now what's wrong with overlapping your panels? Well, there are a few things that come to mind for me. Number one, the biggest thing is you will not be able to reshape that panel properly to get the shape where you want it to hammer and dolly it and get up behind there and to flatten it out the way it should be for a good finished product. Because you have two layers, even if you're only using 20 gauge thick material, you're still ending up with the double thickness there. That's like 16 gauge material when you're talking about two layers of 20 gauge and you have more surface area. And if you, you have a step, you have a bead line, that's creating more structure. I have tried this before. Hammering out an overlapped weld is, it's just not going to happen to a good degree. You're not gonna get it where it needs to be. Now that segues right into the second point. The second point is you're going to need a lot of filler on that finished panel to get it to smooth out. Because you've got an overlap, your panels are never gonna quite line up right. You're, you're gonna have a little distortion along there. If you weld a long seam up, you're gonna get some shrinkage, some material moving. It's gonna warp on you. And again, you're not gonna be able to hammer and dolly it properly to get a smooth finish on it. So you're gonna end up with a lot of filler. Now I will freely admit there are plenty of cars rolling down the road with tons of filler on them, but it is my personal goal to go with the minimal amount of filler on every project I do. I don't always achieve it, but it's my goal whenever I set out on a project. There are a few problems with adding a lot of filler. The more filler you have, the more material you put on, the likelier you are to have issue. That means something like moisture in the filler causing rust down the road the filler not hardening properly because you didn't get the mixture quite right, pinholes in the filler, air bubbles in general, cracks in the filler down the road. You have to think about that. A lot of filler on a panel can be a problem. It's a liability down the road. You may never have it crack from the vehicle twisting and giving and moving. It might not do that for you. You might get away with it. But what if somebody just bumps you in a parking lot? Somebody's backing out of a parking spot and they cut it too hard and they, they catch your quarter panel. And now what would have been a minor scrape or a minor ding in your fender that could have been easily patch repaired cracks a ton of large filler on your panel because you overdid it. Well, now what? Now you have a whole panel repair. 
if you attack projects like this properly, if you focus on doing the best job you can, you're gonna save yourself heartache and trouble down the road. Now, the third point I wanna make about overlapping panels is something most people don't think about, and that's actually moisture trapped between the two panels. The thing you're not thinking about is that this panel, these overlapping sections have air trapped between them. Doesn't matter if you fully weld up the outside and you seam seal the backside, you have atmosphere trapped between those. You are not creating a vacuum. You can't create a vacuum between these two pieces. Any air in between there is going to condensate. So when I do overlap, the way I rust prevent is I go ahead and primer and paint in between the panels where they're gonna be joining together. I will mark the spots where the spot welds are going to be, tape off those spots, and then prime, paint, go ahead and put do whatever rust preventative I can between those two layers so that I'm ready to go. Put it together, I have to take the tape off, and I can spot weld those specific spots. Sure, they're not as rust prevented as I would like, but I can only do so much on cars. I try to make things better than they used to be whenever I can, but there are just some things you can't get around. Now, if I'm using resistance welder, I don't need to do that. I can actually burn through the paint and primer. I, not many layers of it, but using shunting pliers, that's a whole different thing. I will do a video about that eventually. So butt welding your panels is the key. That is what you should be aiming toward. This was taught to me many years ago. I used to overlap panels because I didn't know any better. I thought it was easier, it saved me time, trouble, but you're just opening a can of worms down the road. And I've had people say, well, you know, I'm not gonna drive this thing in the rain, that's not gonna get, well, condensational form sitting in your garage. It will start to rust. I've seen plenty of cars that have sat in barns, in garages for decades, just sitting neglected and they're rusty as heck. What's with that? Moisture got to them. It will always finds a way. When you butt weld panels, you allow yourself so many more options for finishing that panel off. I was working on the 55 Chevy at my day job, and on that I replaced the both quarter panels. And both sides, some reason, ended up with a little flare out at the B pillar. The original skin where I made it at two kind of flared out a little bit for on the original sheet metal. The new sheet metal was pretty flat coming into that. So then I had this ridge, this bump right where the weld was. It didn't notice it until I had fully welded the panel but I was able to correct it afterward. I was able to shrink it with a shrinking disc. I was able to hammer and dolly and kind of spread it out and move it out. I was able to bring that in and get a nice flat finish on the side of those quarter panels, just with some love, some effort. I never would have been able to do that had I overlapped those panels. Sure, it would have been easier, but I would have created a can of worms down the road. I would have had a weirdly shaped 55 Chevy all bubbly in ways that it shouldn't have been bubbly. It would have been a mess. And a lot of cars are like that if you look at them. You go to a car show, you really pick apart things, you can find these problems on vehicles. You can do this. I know that butt welding panels seems daunting. Getting that fit just right so your MIG or your TIG welder can get that seam with a perfect fit, I get it. It's not the simplest thing. It's hard to hold a panel sometimes. Well, if it's overlapped, I can just screw it together. Yeah. Getting a flat fit proper can be difficult. It's hard to get to with clamps sometimes, but that's where I use magnets. That's where I'll use Clecos on both sides with a little strap I put in between there. I will be showing you these techniques in videos, I promise, but I needed to get the basics, the why out of the way before I get to the how. What I'm telling you is try, practice, practice, practice. You can fit panels well enough. You can get them where they need to be to get a good butt weld on your panels. Just give it a try, work on it, practice it. You can do it. I file fit my panels. I get them as close as I can to a perfect seam all the way along before I ever strike an arc on that piece of material. I learned to do it, you can learn to do it. I didn't just pick it up and do it perfect the first time, it took practice. I had to get to where I was happy with it. I still need to improve. I still have room to practice and grow because there is always room to improve. All right, folks, I hope I'm not ranting too much here. I know I might feel like I'm attacking you because I'm telling you the way you've been doing things is wrong, but I'm just trying to open your eyes to the way things should be done and why they should be done that way. Not just telling you you're wrong, don't do that, do this. I want to explain why you should be doing this, not that. Thanks for watching this video, folks. Drop a video a like if you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments down below. Is this the way you do things? Do you overlap them and you have no problem with it? You've been doing it for decades, screw me. Or do you wanna try butt welding? Are you gonna to learn to butt weld? Or is that how you always install panels? Let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel for new content like this every week. Thanks for coming around, folks.